In this video series, we'll cover scripting interactive form fields in a PDF document. I didn't say a PDF form, I said a PDF document, because form fields are useful for much more than what we think of as a traditional form. We can use them for everything from simple document navigation to creating complex multi-document applications. Because PDFs are electronic documents, there is almost no limit to how form fields can be used to move document data, interact with the user, and enhance the user's experience. A PDF is more than just a document, and Acrobat is more than just a document viewer. Acrobat and PDF together are a document application platform. A plain PDF page, like the one you're looking at right now, is very much like a piece of paper. We can look at it and read it, but there is no interaction with the user. What we're looking at is called the PDF content. For our purposes, we can think of it as a static background, like a picture. Interactive elements, like form fields, are rectangular elements that float above the static content. They respond to mouse clicks and keystrokes, and they display dynamic information. Although we're going to be talking about form fields, keep in mind that form fields are not the only interactive elements that can be placed onto a document. There are multimedia displays and markup annotations and a few other things. These elements interact with the user and display runtime information in very much the same way that elements on a web page interact with the user. And this is one of the reasons for making non-form PDFs interactive to give the user the same experience that they get from a web page. There are eight different kinds of form fields available for placement on a PDF. Six of these are very general, multi-purpose types of form fields. And this is where we'll spend most of our discussion on form fields. Two of the eight are special purpose form fields. And I'll only spend a little bit of time on these in this series of videos. A more detailed discussion will be handled in a later presentation. Let's take a look at these elements. The first field is arguably the simplest, most familiar, and most useful of all. The button field. Buttons provide a very simple way to initiate some kind of action, whether it's resetting a form, navigating to another page in the document, or initiating some more complex kind of action. Here's a button, and notice that when I click on it, it populates a form field a little bit farther down on the page with some text. This is a very simple action, but it's also very powerful. Buttons don't have what we could call a true field value, and it's the only one of the form fields that doesn't have a value associated with it. It's mostly used just to trigger an action. However, one of the greatest properties of buttons is that they can display an image, and it can be done dynamically at runtime. So, in a way, we can think of the button's image as data. We'll get into this in the video on using buttons. The next two fields are related to the button, but they do have a value, the checkbox and the radio button. These elements have a binary value. They're either on or off. For example, the checkbox. When I click on it once, it turns on and a check is displayed in the box. I click on it a second time, the check turns off. The checkbox is either on or off. Radio buttons operate as a group. Only one can be on at a time, like the buttons in an old style car radio. If I click one, the other button turns off. Notice again that the scripting actions that I defined for these buttons change the text in the text box just below the radio buttons. I've created these actions just for demonstration purposes. Checkboxes are used to turn a single item on or off, and radio buttons are used to select one option from many, like the answers on a multiple choice test. The next field down, the text field, also called the text edit field, is another very common and familiar type of form field, like the button element. It's used to collect text input from the user. I can click on it to activate it, and what I'll do is I'll delete the current input and type in hello world. This just demonstrates that the text box is for collecting text input from the user. 
it can collect either a single line, as I've set it up here, or multiple lines, depending on how I've set up its properties. But, as we'll see in a later video, it's also one of the most complex of the form fields to program. The last two fields on this page are two different variations on a list, or a list field. The plain list field, which is the last one, displays a list of items that the user can choose from. Again, I've added some scripts to this list field. It populates the text field. This list is set up for multiple selection. I can select one item, or I can select several items. The combo box, or drop-down list, or it's even called a drop-down menu sometimes, operates very much like the list element, only it takes up a lot less space. For this reason, they're very popular. Drop-down list can't be made multiple select. These are single selection only fields. If I select an item off the list, you can see I have some underlying action script in here that populates the text field. One of the great features of the combo box, though, is that I can add in my own text, unlike the regular list field. And this, of course, is the reason it's called a combo box. It's a combination of both the text field and the list field. This particular field type is both very useful and a little tricky to work with. These are details we'll discuss in another video. The six field types we've just covered are the basic form field types. They are very generic and can be used for a wide range of user interaction. They are useful not just for collecting user input, but also for displaying information to the user. Keep this in mind when you're working on your own documents. The two special form field types are the signature field and the barcode field. The barcode field was added in Acrobat 8, so it's a very recent innovation. Both of these fields are much less familiar to users and much less used than the other field types. And from a form scripting perspective, there isn't much that can be done with them. They'll both receive light coverage here. A signature field is for applying a digital signature to the PDF file. Digitally signing a PDF affects the entire PDF file. It changes how the PDF can be used. This is very, very different from any of the other form fields which, in many ways, operate independently from the document. A digital signature doesn't protect the document. It's there to guarantee that any changes to the document can be detected and logged. Signatures are a very big topic on their own and will be covered more fully at a later time. The barcode fields are used for forms that will be printed. The basic idea is that form data is encoded into the barcode. Then, the user prints out the form and either faxes or mails the form, and when I say mail, I mean snail mail, not email, but mails the form to its destination. On the receiving end, the barcode is scanned to collect form data. This saves enormous amounts of time re-entering data and eliminates re-entry errors. Barcodes are used in document workflows that still rely on paper. Let's take a quick look at how this works. I've connected the barcode to these two fields. Watch how the barcode changes when I enter this data into the field. There, you saw some changes in how the barcode was configured. This data is now encoded into the barcode field. The one connection between barcodes and JavaScript programming in Acrobat is that we can programmatically change the data that the barcode encodes without having to connect it to any fields at all. That concludes our introduction into Acrobat form fields. Next, we'll see how fields are added to a PDF and set up for use.